Hello, my name is Tianor Terveyn. I'm a technology specialist based in uh, the Netherlands, working for Microsoft. Um, and this demonstration involves uh, System Center 2012 and how that helps to managing a private cloud. Um, what, we are, uh, what I'm going to demonstrate in, in this demo is the strength of the integration of the whole System Center 2012 suite and I will demonstrate some core self-service scenarios where you can uh, uh, realize a customer onboarding scenario where we provision a complete cloud including uh, services within it uh, including an identity uh, to leverage uh, for the self-service portal through that we can um, as I just mentioned provision a cloud but also provision a whole service and of course we can provision a virtual machine from there we can modify the capacity of the cloud or or the uh, virtual machine or the service and we will actually uh, uh, go ahead and deploy a new service instance and update that service instance as well so let's uh, quickly uh, move on uh, to the demo so this is my uh, my small uh, demo and testing environment uh, running on uh, on Hyper-V. Uh, I've got a number of virtual machines uh, uh, running here, and let let me start start off with showing uh, what I've got running in my infrastructure, so in my data center. So first of all, I've got Virtual Machine Manager uh, uh, running uh, in here, and as you can see, um, I've got. Uh, two clouds configured, a development and testing cloud, I've got a production cloud, I've got uh, two host group defined, so the Amsterdam data center and the Hofdorp data center, uh, uh, where I, I also live in, um, almost literally in the data center here, um, and I've got two Hyper-V hosts uh, configured within Virtual Machine Manager. Of course, this could be uh, a VMware service as well, or SAN servers. Um, but in this case, we're going to focus on the uh, on the Microsoft Hyper-V side. Um, I've got also uh, under my settings uh, two uh, user roles defined: an administrator role and a self-service uh, role. And I've got also my library configured, where I leverage uh, going to leverage a VM template um, um, and a service template. And my service here uh, consists of the VM template you just just uh, you ju just saw. Um, so um, switching over to Operations Manager. Operations Manager is going to monitor uh, my cloud. Uh, um, it's going to pick that up without any uh, uh, configuration uh, on the Operations Manager side. So uh, that will, will happen out of the box uh, because of the connectors going on between the system center products. As you can see, I've got currently two uh, clouds, which you've just seen in Virtual Machine Manager. And I have currently deployed uh, one service already. Um, so the third piece I'm going to show you is uh, Orchestrator. That's the, uh, the whole um, uh, magic behind this uh, to realize deployment scenarios so this is my orchestrator environment and we are going to leverage this runbook my complete user onboarding in case uh, uh, if, if I want to do a full complete user onboarding without the presence of an existing cloud or existing user role of an existing Active Directory identity as you can see these runbooks um, uh, like change uh, VM capacity and create a user role deploy a service is going to be leveraged from System Center Service Manager. So switching over to Service Manager, I've um, uh, created a number of connectors which you can create out of the box uh, via um, and this right hand side, create connector, and that will bring in the runbooks I just showed you. So if I click on the library, that will bring in all the runbooks um, I've I created in, in Orchestrator and from there on I'm able to create a, a uh, service request template based on that runbook. I've got also uh, um, users and computers open, open here from Active Directory um, currently in my demo container. Currently uh, no uh, user is in it. 
and I've got my notification standby to receive any notification I, out of uh, service manager so I'm gonna minimize this again and now we are going to switch over to the self-service portal so now I'm going to put on my head of a, an end user uh, um, um, or a, a cloud uh, owner um, and I because uh, currently um, I would like to achieve the user onboarding uh, uh, scenario so this is the self-service portal I can I can uh, 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 make an incident uh, uh, create an incident new incident but also I can consume service offerings uh, which have been configured so um, I'm going to focus on the private cloud section if I click on there uh, you will see all the service offerings which are available uh, to me uh, depending on whether I've got permissions to uh, to utilize them so I'm going to select from this list the full customer onboarding um, that will bring me to the full customer onboarding uh, service request and it will create automatically a customer cloud an active directory user and also a VMM user role which enables me to log on uh, to the app controller self-service portal to uh, to consume that cl cloud uh, and uh, further and and, uh, and eventually manage uh, my my service which has been uh, uh, assigned to me or available to me so let's uh, get this demo going I'm going to um, n uh, need to, to to answer a couple of questions so first of all um, the service request form is asking me um, what is the customer name so in this case we're going to use this name the Wookie Corporation that is my new customer um, it has a cost center of 100 and I'm going to enter a cloud name here so let's call that the Wookie cloud um, if I'm going to create a cloud it needs to land on a host group so um, and this is the strength of the uh, dynamic uh, um, um, reaching a dynamic piece of it reaching out to the CMDB because the connectors have brought in all this rich information from virtual machine manager and via that I can select on which host group I would like to land the cloud on so in this case I'm going to select the Amsterdam data center and go down a bit and now it's requesting me to enter a user role uh, who is going to manage my new cloud so I'm gonna select here or enter here because this is going to be created my Wookie users and if I hit on next um, I need to uh, uh, define some capacity here, the cloud capacity so how much storage am I going to uh, uh, I'm going to allocate to that cloud on this case uh, 50 gigabytes uh, the cloud can host 4 VM maximum and I'm gonna assign 4 gigs because I'm running this uh, demo on my two laptops here so it's not a real capacity data center but uh, it will work um, and I'm going to allow 8 virtual uh, CPUs now it is asking me for a AD account name for the app controller login because I want to enable this uh, this customer to log in themselves so I'm gonna provide a identity here it's called Chewy and it is asking my first name and last name for administration purposes there we go click on next so I'm getting a nice summary here okay that's uh, what I want click on submit and that will submit the the service request um, um, back to uh, to service manager so now I've configured this workflow this service request to be approved first because I don't want to have uh, uh, users requesting uh, clouds and cap and consuming fabric uh, uh, c capacity from me so I just want to first want to evaluate what what is uh, what is being re requested so within a couple of, of seconds uh, the internal workflow of service manager will kick off and notify me uh, via email that I have a pending approval uh, 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 waiting for me but in the meantime we can look at the work items and look whether the service request has been created as you can see it has been created the full customer onboarding and we can look at the um, specifics in there 
and you can see that that these are all the answers that that the users ha user have had given um, but we are interested in this specific tab and that is the activity tab so you can see that um, uh, my service request consists of two steps an approval cycle and uh, then it will continue the uh, uh, the service request uh, based on the runbook automation uh, uh, by executing this and and creating all that that uh, that beautiful uh, uh, stuff which needs to happen before I can log in into the self-service portal. So let's give um, or here's the uh, the notification coming in. So if I open this. Uh, I will get a nice formatted email uh, uh, saying that I have that I have an approval waiting, so I can easily click on this link and that will bring me to the portal to um, to uh, approve this. So I'm switching hats here. So now I'm putting a hat on of the manager who is in charge uh, and needs to uh, approve this. This might be a financial manager or a business manager. And from here, I can see all the specifics I've uh, entered earlier. So uh, the Wookie Corporation, um, and I can see here all the data, how much storage, how much uh, VM capacity, etc., etc. Well, I'm going to go ahead with this. So what I'm going to do now is approve it. So I'm going to select who I am and click approve. I approve. So that that has been uh, has been approved. So if we take a look back at the service request, um, this will be picked up again by the internal workflow we just uh, um, did. So now it will move on to the the second part because I uh, approved this workflow to to run right now. Uh, so it will and it has uh, become in in progress and now we can look at the beautiful integration of System Center Orchestrator here because um, I can open up that activity and I can examine the runbook if, if I want to do you, you can see here the fields but on the right hand side I can immediately from from this point of view I can open up the associated runbook and that will reach out to Orchestrator and it enables me to monitor the job uh, which has just been initiated. So I can click on the instance uh, and I can view the details. So normally this, this, this shouldn't be necessary but, but because of the demo I wanted to show you um, what is happening here. So the runbook is being now initiated uh, being triggered out of, out of Service Manager and now I need to, ha need to do a couple of things. First of all you can see that the Active Directory user has already been created for me so that's good. Um, the host group where the uh, cloud uh, uh, will going to is going to land on has been retrieved by the correlation within the CMDB, and now I've passed uh, to uh, to the next step, and that is actually uh, to provision a new cloud for me. So that will that will uh, happen uh, um, uh, will 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 be uh, triggered and will be uh, uh, initiated on Virtual Machine Manager. So because of, of uh, and this, this is a, a, a interesting step here, because um, the cloud doesn't exist, uh, it has just been created. I don't want to wait for the uh, VMM connector to synchronize that data into CMD, the CMDB of Service Manager. But instead of that, I'm, I'm querying uh, VMM to get me the cloud idea so that I'm able to create a user role and tie that to the cloud I just created. So in other words, I I'm created the cloud, created a user role, but that user role uh, is dependent on, on, in my scenario, on the cloud which, which is going to manage. So let's switch over to, um, to um, uh, Virtual Machine Manager for a second.